Hello. My name is Lindsay Heron Lewis, and I'm the associate pastor here at Fairmount Presbyterian Church. And guess what? It is Advent! Finally, this time we've been waiting for. I know many people who went against all of their traditions and set up Advent things before Thanksgiving this year. If you did that, good for you. If you didn't, today's the day. It's the first Sunday in Advent, the time that we set aside to prepare for the good news of the coming of Christ. It's four weeks long, and we are so excited that we get to be in community together, even though we're apart, to celebrate this sacred season and the good news that is on its way. Because it's Advent, even though we're social distanced and staying at home and all the things, there's still a lot of ways that you can connect here to the church and to your faith community. So I have a lot of announcements for you. The first is that you'll see that we have some Advent decorations up. And you might think, huh, that seems like less than in previous years. Well, you're just going to have to keep tuning in every week to see what other things appear in the worship space. It's like design, no, what is that? Choose your own, what are those books? Choose your own adventure. You've got to keep coming back to see what happens next. So we hope that you'll keep continuing to join in, tune in on Sundays to watch the service. On Tuesday, December 8th, we will be having a blue Christmas service. This is a service of prayer and lament, a service that says, while we're excited to be in this Advent season, there's also a lot going on that's not okay. There's a lot that we're grieving. That's, there's a lot of loss that we're experiencing. And so that's a s service where we name that and have some time of quiet and reflection and beautiful music to help us understand that part of ourselves and what we're feeling in this Advent season. We also will be having a carol sing with many of our choir members and professional singers. That will be more details on the date of that to come, but we hope that you will tune in for that. And then on Christmas Eve, we will be having two services that are all online. One will be posted at 5 p.m., and that will be our Family Plus service that's going to include a really cool children's pageant. So we hope that you'll tune in for that. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll have the more traditional service that you're used to coming to at 10 o'clock at night. So we'll, you'll be able to find those on the website, YouTube, all of the places. And we hope that you'll tune in and invite your friends and family to do the same. We also are doing this Advent in a box thing. And we're recording this a little bit before you'll see it. So I don't know how many boxes will be left by this time, but you can always call the office and see if we have any. They're pretty cool. They're full of all kinds of neat stuff, ways to connect to the church and to your faith in this season. And so we do hope that you'll check that out um, and let us know if you need stuff because it's pretty cool and we want to get it to you. We also are doing a few different things to be of service to our community. The first is called Gifts for Kids program, and this is similar to the Holiday Angels program that we've participated in years past, um, but it's kind of an interim program. It's a little bit different this year, but still with the same, the clients of the Heights Emergency Food Center. And so you can find more information about that in the bulletin, Facebook, E! News, and on our website. And you'll find a link there that you can go and fill out and you'll be given the name of a child or a family to purchase gifts for, and there's all the information that you'll need there. We also want to encourage you to get an edition of Wrap Up Homelessness. The edition of the Cleveland Street Chronicle is back this year. Each page has articles on one side and wrapping paper on the other side, so you're reducing, reusing, recycling, also fantastic. And it's designed by the same people who sell the paper. It's a great way to support the Northeast Ohio Coalition on Homelessness, and to wrap your gifts at the same time. So there's more information on our website, in the bulletin, all of those places about how you can find information about how to get a hold of one of those. Also, another way you can connect is that Conrad and Gianna recently performed a recital, an online recital, and you can watch it. If you go to our Facebook page, you'll be able to find more information and listen to the beautiful music that they have there. So friends, that was a lot, but it's Advent, and Christ is still coming. So friends, let us worship God.
The first candle of Advent is the candle of hope. Our hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who has promised to be faithful to us every moment of our lives. Hear the promises of scripture from the prophet Isaiah. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains. It will be lifted above the hills. Peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let's go up to the Lord's mountain, to the house of Jacob's God, so that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk in God's paths. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, we want to prepare room for you in our hearts. Calm us, focus us, and fill us with hope so that we might be fully ready for you. Amen. Like a faded dry leaf that the wind blows away, our sins dry us up, faded and brittle, we are carried off by the wrongs we have done. Yet God loves us still and is able to restore and renew us with the water of life. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Original dreamer, over and over again in scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream for community and hope. We hear your dreams, and yet we do not open our eyes. We continue to live with the curtains drawn, the covers pulled tight, eyes shut to the realities of the world. Forgive us. Kindle a hope in us that will burn through the darkest nights. Give us the strength and the will to keep awake in this sleeping world. With hope we pray, amen.
grace of God, given us, given to us in Christ Jesus, strengths, strengthens us to, to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Thanks be to God, who is faithful and has called us into the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the peace of Christ be with you. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Isaiah in the 64th chapter. Let us listen now for God's word to us this day. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when a fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. You who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself when we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. 
we all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, you've probably noticed by now that we're trying something new this week. I'm not recording from the beautiful Fairmount Sanctuary where the rest of today's service takes place. Instead, I'm sitting in my humble living room next to a fireplace that's waiting to be repaired and a newly lit wreath from a Fairmount Advent box. Today is the first Sunday of Advent and I invite you to light one candle for worship as a multiplication of the one large sanctuary candle into more than 100 flames in Fairmount homes, a sharing of the light of Christ amongst our family of faith. For our Jewish siblings, the home has long been a place of worship. Weekly services marking the beginning of the Jewish Sabbath take place on Friday evenings, and the lighting of the candles for Hanukkah generally happens in the family home. Christian worship, which grew out of Jewish services in the time of Jesus, began as house churches. The record in the book of Acts tells us that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Some 25 years later, the apostle Paul wrote to friends in Rome, greet also the church that meets in their house. During the following decades, the Christians continued to meet in homes. In times of persecution, they went underground into catacombs. But after the Roman Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity, church buildings began to multiply. In the 16th and the early 17th centuries, the Re Reformation fostered new churches as Protestants built their own places of worship. Yet in every century, Christians have met in homes and small groups to supplement their more formal church experience. In the past 10 months of pandemic, homes have become our safe places and our sanctuaries. We may supplement by posting worship enrichment for children and worship services for adults to be together spiritually, but realistically, at least for now, home is where we meet God, in our living rooms, at our kitchen tables, sitting on the porch, and things may be this way for some time to come. So this is our chance to develop home faith practices where we carve time and space to pray and to read scripture, to journal and to dream and to light candles. This is where we wait. As I gathered my thoughts to craft this sermon around the text for the first Sunday in Advent, there was a horrific windstorm going on near the lake on the west side. Trees blew down and blocked roads my neighbor's porch furniture scooted across the backyard and landed in our bushes, and the screen doors of our old farmhouse blew open and slammed shut all evening, causing our brave golden, golden doodle to huddle in fear under the kitchen table. It reminded me of that strange storm last fall in Cleveland Heights that cut off power to the church and community for several days. The power of a storm like that or the recent hurricanes that have hit Central America is both scary and humbling. And I think most of us prefer not to see the full power of creation gathered and released upon the earth. Yet, in the passage from Isaiah 64, it seems like that's exactly what's being asked for. Divine intervention, visible, dramatic, awe-inspiring. 
The people return from their exile and are bewildered by the chaos and confusion of a once beloved city now destroyed. And the prophet Isaiah is ready for the presence of God to come down and to shake the nations, to alert the people and to bring long-awaited justice. There's that hint of desperation in his tone. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Is the cry of a people who realize they've made a mess of the world and only God can set it right. These are not optimistic thoughts wanting to look at the bright side of life. These are honest, bold, desperate expressions, craving action and pleading for God's intervention. And perhaps we understand this disorientation far more deeply than we realize. This Advent season begins amid pandemic and ongoing protest. We're not prepared for the dramatic shifts in our ways of living as COVID-19 began its trek across the globe. Many physical bodies have been ravaged and lives taken by this aggressive virus. Families, churches, schools, and employees have been scattered from their gathering spaces into physical isolation. The truth is that things down here are not right and that we do dream of God's saving help. For so many reasons, personal and communal, I think we've all had prayers that sound like Isaiah's. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. We dream of a world set right, of peace and stability prevailing, of justice reigning, of safety surrounding, and that longing can lead two different ways. It can fester, causing bitterness, resentment, and fear. Or it can inspire in us faithful hope, a commitment to stay alert for God's working in the world, even an acceptance of hardship as gift. The more we are aware of hope, the more it will structure our visions of tomorrow and our prayers for today. And that's why the prophet's able to end his lament with the grace of this tender reminder O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. I once heard a story about white missionaries on a track in the outback in Australia. Accompanied by Aboriginal people as guides, one day the missionaries wake up, prepare for another day of hiking, and discover that their local companions are refusing to move. Frustrated that they cannot get their guides to pack up and hike, they finally ask the interpreter to find out what's wrong. The answer they get back is, we have to let our souls catch up to us. We left them behind a day or two ago. One of the reasons I think Advent can be a real gift for us this year is that we can use it as a time to let our souls catch up. Waiting has always been a position of faithfulness in the Bible. Because waiting, waiting for something, means we know we cannot provide it on our own. Wait for the Lord, the psalmist says. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The season of Advent, which means coming, is the beginning of the church year and is often thought of as a time of waiting. Advent looks to the past and the celebration of the first coming of Jesus at Bethlehem, but Advent also looks to the future in anticipation of the return of Christ the King in the second Advent. And as we look to both the past and the future, the faithful response is to focus on God's faithfulness in the past, the future, and especially in the present. Simone Weil once said that absolutely unmixed attention is prayer. If we turn our mind toward the good, it is impossible that little by little, the whole soul will not be attracted thereto in spite of itself. So we wait by paying attention and living each day with purpose, 
by getting up in the morning and preparing for the day because there will be something in this day that merits such preparation. Those who dream stay awake by staying hopeful for ourselves and for the sake of others, even when all seems hopeless. We plead with God even when God seems distant. We do the right thing with no promise of reward. We practice courage even in the face of overwhelming odds. So this first Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of hope. We give voice to our longing and say, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. We plead for God's intervention and join in God's redemptive work. We choose to no longer let bitterness and resentment and fear sweep us away and choose instead to let God forgive, heal, restore, shape, and renew us. We let the potter be at work, and we give our souls a chance to catch up. And we do this because we believe that in the child born at Bethlehem long ago, God did come down. That over a baptism one day in the Jordan River, God did tear open the heavens, and for a few short years, Jesus walked the dusty roads of Galilee, healed the sick, welcomed the outcast, restored the unclean, and equipped the disciples to change the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yet people didn't get that God had come down and come so close, maybe too close. And Jesus was crucified on the cross and placed in a tomb. And again, God opened the heavens and came down so that on the third day, when death could not contain him, when the very love and power of God defeated the powers of sin and death, the powers of violence and injustice, Jesus rose up and walked into the light of the first day of the week. We can do this. In all of our sacred, ordinary spaces, we can wait. We can dream. We can keep awake. Hear this poem by John Vandeleer called Waiting and Watching. You call me to wait on you, Lord, but I get tired of waiting. Your answers to my prayers, your call for me to serve you, the promise of your coming kingdom, they all seem to take so long. You tell me to watch for your coming, Lord, but I'm not sure how to prepare for a thief in the night, an undisclosed time, and your disconcerting habit of secrecy and mystery. Yet something inside whispers that you're not all that hard to find, that you're always coming to me, and that both the waiting and the watching are more about being open to you now than about trying not to be surprised in the future. And so I will keep waiting, and I'll try to stay alert so that I can catch the glimpses of your glory that fill my day every day. Amen.
Will you join me in prayer? O Holy One of Israel, whose long history with your people is punctuated by ups and downs, sins and disappointments, transgressions and wanderings, we come before you in humility as we begin this, our Advent journey. We confess that like the ancients, our zeal and ardor in being faithful sometimes wanes. We sometimes stray from the best we know, and we sometimes feel that you have hidden your face from us. Help us in these times to continue to call upon you and to know that you have claimed us in Jesus Christ. Help us to know that we are your clay and you are the potter, and to know that we are indeed the work of your hand. Help us to know that your anger is not the last word in your relationship with your people and that we are indeed your people. While we would trust that you are always and ever present, may we come to experience that more deeply this Advent time. Overcome once again the distance and the uncertainty we have felt on our journey and make us to know your Advent peace. Cover all of those regions of human pain and suffering in our world and bring hope. Hear us as we offer to you now the prayers on our hearts for our world, for our loved ones, for ourselves. And hear us as we pray together as your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. And doing that gives voice to our longings. It helps us to plead for God's intervention. It lets us choose God's healing, that God might shape and renew us. And it gives us a little time to let our souls catch up. So as you begin this Advent journey, may you know there is hope. And may you know that you are surrounded by the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And may that strengthen you to be God's glad and faithful people today and always. Amen.